Alrighty folks, so this is going to start our first section in the next unit, unit H, which involves rational expressions, equations, and functions. The first section will define rational expressions for you. We'll also look at some rational functions and uh, find domains of rational functions, which is one of the things that's going to cause a few problems here. If uh, our denominator is equal to zero, it, uh, it becomes an issue, and then use some rational expressions to model and solve real-life problems. In addition, simplifying rational expressions using factoring and canceling will be another one of our goals for this section. Okay, Let's talk about the domain of a rational function first. This next slide shows you the definition of a rational expression where you have two polynomials, u and v, put them over each other as a fraction. Uh, this is, becomes then a rational expression. The domain of this expression is the set of all numbers so that v is not zero. So the denominator of that fraction cannot be zero if you have two polynomials written as a fraction or a ratio, one on top of the other. Uh, the definition holds true when you turn that expression into a function. What happens if u and v are expressions and they're turned into functions of f of x? Then we still have a rational function, okay? And the domain of that rational function is uh, the set of all numbers for which that bottom polynomial, the denominator, is, uh, is equal to zero, okay? Make sure you hit that uh, pause button if you need to get those definitions in your notes, okay? Uh, how do I uh, find the domain of a given rational function, okay? Find the domain of each rational function. So it's a pretty easy thing to do, okay? You set the denominator equal to zero, that's step one, and step two, solve for x. And what you're establishing is the values that x actually cannot be because it'll make a denominator of zero. Let's do the first one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that denominator, x minus two, and set it equal to zero. Step one, solve for x. Step two, add two to both sides, x equals two. But what we have established, really, is that, in fact, x cannot be 2. Because, think about it, if we put a 2 in that denominator for x, then it makes that denominator 0. And division by 0 is undefined, does not exist. So we cannot have that, okay? Let's follow the steps for the second one. Set x squared minus 16 equal to 0. How do you solve this? Well, this was the last unit, right? you got to factor x minus 4, x plus 4, equal to 0, and use the zero product property to say that x equals either positive 4 or negative 4, okay? But what we have actually found in this case, because that comes from the denominator, is that x cannot be those values. So pause the video if you need to get those two steps, but it's a pretty easy process. Set the denominator equal to 0, solve for x, and know that, again, what you did find was what x cannot be, okay? Here's a few solutions. The denominator is 0. <laughs> when x is 4 or negative 4, or x equals to 2 if you need it, okay? How do we simplify rational expressions? Well, it turns out that if you have common factors uh, on the top and on the bottom, if u, v, and w are all real numbers, variables, or expressions, as long as v and w aren't 0, remember those denominators, then the following is valid. If you have u times w, u time, v times w, top and bottom, then u and w and w are factors that are in common in the denominator and the numerator, so you can cancel them out. If you have something over something, it just equals to 1. So you can cancel it out, basically. Pause the video if you need. I'll show you how this works with simplifying expressions. Okay? Let's simplify this guy. Okay? When you have a fraction that's like this split into two pieces, you can write um, each of them separately or factor out. Let me back up. Back up here so I have some room. Okay? You can do this uh, two ways, okay? You can either take that 2x cubed and write it over 6x squared, and that minus 6x and write it over 6x squared and simplify individually, or, or we can look at the top and say, well, you can factor. You can factor out a 2x, right? And that's a x squared minus uh, 3, okay, over 6x squared, and then uh, simplify, Okay, see those common factors? So 2 and 6 simplify to 1 over 3, okay? And x3 over x2, you subtract the powers, that just becomes x. So really what you have is x over 3. This guy, the 6s cancel out, and x over x, well, you've got 2x's downstairs, right? So you can leave 1x downstairs, leave it as 1 over x, okay? And that simplifies. 
The other way is like this where you factored, okay, and that changes to one-third, one of the x cancels, so you got x squared minus three, okay, and that's if you were to combine these by adding. So really, this method is the best one. Again, you want to cancel top and bottom any common factors that you might have, okay? Let's do another one. As long as you know that x cannot equal zero, that's really important, okay? Note that the domain means x cannot equal zero. You should always do that for these rational expressions. Make sure that that denominator is never zero. Factor out the 2x. And you can factor out 2x downstairs, which makes that 1 over 3x that I did, x squared minus 3 over 3x. Uh, in the simplified form, the domain of that rational expression is the same as the original. So all real values of x such that x cannot equal 0, at the end, when you simplify, that is also true. Okay? Application happens when you try to write a ratio of something. Find a ratio of the area of the shaded portion of the triangle to the total area of the whole triangle, okay? So the first thing we got to do is find the area of the shaded portion. Remember, area of a triangle is one-half base times height, okay? So here's the base is 4x, here's the height, x plus 2. That's why they multiplied one-half times 4x times x plus 2, okay? Pause the video if you need to write that down. That's where that came from, okay? They simplified it a little bit by distributing that 4x, and then you can even distribute that one half, you know, because everything can go divided by 2, so it's pretty easy, 2x squared plus 4x. So that's the area of the shaded portion, okay? But remember, what we're trying to find is the ratio of shaded to total area of the big triangle. So shaded portion will go on top. That's how you write a ratio, shaded. Two is like the word that represents the fraction, okay? Shaded to total area. Okay, so now we gotta find the big triangle, which would be this base and this height, all right? Here's the total area of the triangle. Again, remember area equals one half base times height. So this is the base of the triangle, is the four x plus the four x, the two pieces. You're gonna add them up. And the height was x plus four, okay? Simplify a little bit. You're going to get 8x in that parenthesis times x plus 4. Distribute that 8x, 8x squared plus 32x, and then take half of each of them, 4x squared plus 16x. Okay? Pause the video if you need to get all these processes because then we're going to write the ratio. Write the ratio. Again, the ratio comes from writing the top, the shaded portion, over the total, that's what these mean, okay? What we found to be the shaded is the top, what we found to be the bottom is, or the total is the bottom, okay? We factored out a 2x from the top and the bottom. Those 2x's are gonna cancel out nicely because two over four simplifies to one half and the x's cancel out. So you're just gonna end up with x plus two over x, or two, sorry, two times x plus four, okay? Cancel out common factors top and bottom, right? As long as x is greater than 0, don't forget that domain restriction happens uh, from the very beginning. Okay? That's going to complete our lesson for today. It's actually a fairly short video. We will see you tomorrow for some practice on this stuff. See you then.